our next speaker is um, uh, Jade Aronson. Now, Jade, um, th this is actually quite an interesting story. This is the, the second time we were having something very similar like to this. And um, what happened was that somebody from um, uh, Q, um, from Q Sports actually got hold of us. And um, they, it's, it's, they're actually from Pool for Change in Western Province Q Sports. And they came to our first webinar, they watched our first webinar. His name is Khalik. And he said, he contacted me and he said, well, we've got this program that runs. And it's, yes, it's not one of the, the big uh, school programs that you get around the country. However, it helps a lot in kids coaching and, and assisting kids at various levels of um, you know, in, in township areas and rural areas and in different areas in the country. And there's quite a big push for, for it in the, especially the Western Cape. And the Western Cape's got a very successful program going. And Jude will explain that program to you and he'll explain to you how it works and, and all that in his presentation. So he contacted me and spoke to me about it and he told me what, what is happening and, and how they, they encourage and they push um, uh, Q sports. Now, I know it's a funny thing to hear, but if you've got, um, especially what they do in the, in the Western Cape, and if you think about your areas around you, there's, there's a lot of ways of doing it in, in your school hostels, in your uh, tuck shops, in school rooms where, you know, the kids are ambling around the school, they've got nothing to do. And these guys have said, well, actually, there's a lot that you can do and a lot of skills that you can learn by playing, you know, Q sports. So that's pool, um, as I said, pool for change. And they've got a fantastic program going. So um, I'd like to introduce Jude um, to the, let me just get Jude online here. Hello, Jude. Oh, there we go. There's Jude. And Jude will be talking us through the, um, Q Sports and his function within Q Sports. And welcome, welcome to our webinar, Jude. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me, Sean. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen quickly with you guys. Just let me know when you can see it. I can see it perfectly. Thanks, Jude. Uh, so, uh, Sean, the name is Jade, um, and I am one of the guys that is assisting uh, Pool for Change. Um, what Pool for Change is, uh, is a non-profit organization, and um, what we do is we focus on, on Q Sports, and... Uh, our focus on Q Sports is not only to show them what the sport is about, but also about youth development as well. Uh, we started in 2018, where we started a program um, with 40 kids, uh, of actually 40 schools and about 20 learners per school. Uh, in 2019, we then registered the, the organization as an MPO officially. Uh, we also then, in that same year, done a launch with, uh, with the schools enrichment um, officer, uh, who then took the 40 schools and invited them to a official launch. Uh, that then grew, and to date, we have about 60 schools within the Western Cape where it's about approximately 2,000 learners. And the 2,000 learners, 90% of them has never touched the queue in their, in their life before. Um, and with, with us understanding that stats, we've also, uh, we could also see the aggressiveness of, of how quick this, uh, this sport can grow. Who we are, so our team for Pool for Change is a dynamic team of a combination of teachers, community workers and leaders and affiliates. And uh, they also thrive to actually promote youth development. Uh, 
as many of the other sports do, uh, Q Sports comes within a variety of disciplines. Uh, within Q Sports, you have different disciplines. Um, eight ball is is one that is well known as well as snooker. Uh, there's others as well like black ball and and nine ball. I also know that in 2016, uh, the black ball uh, world champion world champions was actually won by the South African team, and um, that is just to show how dominantly the team was made from from Western Cape uh, development kids as well, and um, we 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 can actually see the talent and 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 I think that with with pool for change we we know that if the amount of success and and and, and talent that we find in the Western Cape there's definitely. Um, much more within South Africa, and 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 our, our goal is actually to to nationalise um, the sport and make it more well known than what it currently is. Uh, like everybody know, uh, uh, Q Sports or, or pool specifically currently sits or has this negative connotation to it, where the the sport is is linked to drinking and smoking, bars, etc. And the, the founder, Khalik, that, that you mentioned, um, he decided that uh, because it had that negative connotation, we then take pool to the school um, instead of the kids going out and trying to find these, um, these federations where they can actually uh, get into the sport. Our areas uh, of development and benefits I've listed a few because a lot of people think that um, pool is 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 almost uh, got zero physical um, exercise to it. But however, you you actually really need to be moderate, mod, moderately flexible um, in order to stretch over the table. Uh, you need to have a balance so it promotes stability. Uh, really good hand and eye coordination. Uh, it actually tones the muscles. So normally when, when, when we train kids, uh, and this is now from a federation side, we, we generally have two hour, sh two hour sessions. And uh, if you actually uh, kind of circle a table uh, within two hours, you would approximately walk about a 1.2 kilometers um, without you knowing. So and and that is obviously with with uh, with with a a a moderate pace. The other side we we find benefit is um, on the mental side. So it, it builds it builds focus. Uh, it improves cognitive skills and mental stimulation, handling variable um, variables with with an infinite amount of table layout. So whenever you break a rack um, on a pool table, the possibility of you duplicating that is almost impossible. It actually is impossible. You, you would never get the same layout. And uh, that then obviously brings about problem solving, tactical planning, uh, mathematical calculations, and motion and of on motion and angles, and also visualization. So uh, in order to you, for you to to uh, compete against a component, um, uh, an opponent, you, you definitely need to visualize what your last ball is going to be after your break, um, understanding what that layout is going to look like. And then also it builds confidence and tolerance with uh, handling um, the situation under pressure. Our results uh, for 2018, 2019, uh, what we done was we we, we hosted a, a good couple of, of tournaments. Um, from those tournaments, we were invited to the PSA um, competition, national competition, where we actually sent 25 learners to compete um, in the under 18 um, tournament. And And what I can say is, with with regards to to the tournaments, um, we definitely try and use what 
Aristotle say, uh, you know, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but it's a habit. And what we try and do is we, we try and promote um, hardworking um, students to not only enjoy the game, but also to promote that cognitive ability of problem solving, because we know that those kind of attributes to an individual or a child um, definitely helps them benefit um, later in life as well. One of the highlights in the national um, tournament that we had was there's a, a, a young boy, he's, he's, uh, his name is Imad, he's, he's six years old. And uh, in the national, they actually played against the number one ranking under 18 uh, of South Africa and, and won the game. Um, so if you think of it like a six year old going out for his first time to go and play a national team, um, to go and represent Pool for Change on a national level, competing with the best in South Africa, and, and winning a game is, is something that we really stood in awe of. Um, firstly, because you know that there's a lot of talent out there. And um, a lot of the federations currently uh, does not have the capacity to facilitate, um, to get to all the areas in, 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 West, uh, in Western Cape or, or, or anywhere else within the regions. Um, and, and finding this boy and, and, and actually um, coaching him, um, that was a real highlight. The other benefits and results of development that we had was, uh, was the responses that we received from teachers. Uh, a lot of them uh, started receiving accolades in terms of um, the academic uh, side where we then noticed that the concentration and, and, and focus also started in, uh, becoming enhanced. And um, what, what, I've, what, what we've noticed as, as an organization is that uh, the education department uh, focuses on uh, teachers showing the kids what to learn um, and not necessarily how to learn it. Uh, whereas, whereas the sports and recreation, uh, that actually teaches kids how to learn things, uh, how to focus. You know, we, we, we have this general expectation where um, you tell a child to pay attention, um, expecting the child to understand what, um, what attention is and, and actually how to do it. Uh, but we also know that every, every child comes out of a different household uh, with a different education background and not everybody gets taught how to, how to, how to pay attention. So Pool for Change, um, the organizational chart is, is broken up into, into three sectors. So you have the EXCO as, as the base, and uh, what they do is uh, they're the ones that, that coordinate and, and lay out the plan. Then you have the district exco. Um, and the district exco is the one that executes um, the tournaments and the league um, in, in which the schools will play. Um, then you have your zonal exco, which reports into the district. And, and, and what they do is a, it's, the education department has broken up um, certain sectors within the Western Cape into zones and uh, say for argument's sake five schools or ten schools within the Mitchell's Plain area as an example would, would be classified as zone one and then another section would be classified as zone two. So we then broke it up that those five to ten schools will have a zone and, and, and will have an exco for that zone um, that will then coordinate with the schools and the team managers as well and um, the team managers are generally uh, the teachers of, or a teacher and appointed teacher of the school that, uh, that we also train and educate in terms of what is required. And then we then also have the, 
the appointed coaches as well. And um, those are, are most of the time uh, community workers that, that is coming to, to assist. Um, some of them gets, uh, gets paid for, for, for doing it and, 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 and some, some not, unfortunately. And I think one of the reasons for that is because it's, it's, it's something new. And, and I think that with, with the vision that Pool for Change has, it's definitely going to create a, a, a more, a more um, conducive environment where employment can also be potentially created from. So as I mentioned, uh, the organizational roles, uh, the Pool for Change Exco, uh, they ensure that the sport code is given a clear mandate on implementation. They approve uh, and appoint the organizational structure and then also have quarterly reviews with the District Exco. The District Exco then formulates a strategy in terms of the, and presents to, to the to Pool for Change Exco. Uh, they also do the layout and planning and the development thereof. Um, they coordinate the league structures and national competitions, and then also implement a plan of the pool tables as well as the league and coaching. Um, then our, our zonal exco, they are the ones that will facilitate the league uh, where they would have pro leagues within the school where kids play amongst one another to kind of get a grading system out there. Uh, and then also understand where uh, the child plays in. So how we've, how we've broken it down is through a development classification and a beginner generally plays the pro league alone uh, that is within the school and then the intermediate would play pro league as well as school league, meaning that they would play different schools. And then the advance would then be pro league, the school league, as well as an opportunity to play nationals. And um, in 2019, uh, we also became an associate member to SACS, uh, where we play the role as the developmental uh, sector for on pool. And um, through that, we received a donation by uh, SRSA that uh, gave five pool tables that we could actually go and give into schools where the areas may be underdeveloped and they might not have the ability to afford a pool table within the school. And um, through that, we then try to uh, boost it. We've done some, some, some calculations as well uh, when we started. And an interesting trend is um, within a school, you'll have some pool players that, that actually belongs to a federation. And when you, when you structure this within a, a, a annum uh, and you break it up into quarters, we've noticed that the, the first quarter, you would have quite a bit of advanced players playing um, or joining. And then second quarter, there would, there would be a slight decline. Um, and then there's a, a bit of a shift in the third quarter as well, where a lot of the beginners started perking interest in wanting to play the game. And uh, by the fourth quarter, you've, you've kind of turned the tide where a lot of the beginners um, forms part of the developmental uh, program where they get coaching um, and then also starts forming part of the, the, the Pool for Change Federation. Pool for Change has put out a program where it allows the school to purchase a, a program pack. Uh, that program pack includes a pool table as well as the, develop, the developmental pack. So it's a, a little theory book um, that guides the, the, the teachers um, to facilitate coaching or actually bring a, a outside coach in and, uh, and then the coach then runs through that same program. Um, very similar to 
to what um, what the previous speaker mentioned, where he um, he said that in Belgium they've they've got this one layout, and uh, everybody complies to to that. If if any changes is made to the senior team, then then everybody else changes. Uh, we we kind of put the pact together like that, uh, understanding what benefits that bring. Um, because if if you have a, a certain standard uh, in which you want to train someone, uh, it doesn't matter if the person that is coaching might not be a professional pool player, but he is working against some theory that he needs to cover um, where the the game is played and they need to perform certain skill shots uh, in order to move to the next level. The skills development program uh, is broken up into a pro league. I've kind of touched base a bit on this where the pro league is, is done within the school. Um, what, we've, what we've also picked up is uh, that a lot of the kids on, on social media would, would actually uh, boast about their, their ranking within the school. And, and that kind of creates a, a bit of a, a positive and, and, and good competition. Um, the other side of it is uh, you don't need to be a extreme skilled athlete uh, to want to play the game. Um, and generally, if you are someone that is witty and sharp, uh, you, you, you can definitely come through with a good tactical plan to play the game. Uh, then it's the school league. Um, the school league comes with a, with a, lot, of, with, uh, a lot of pros and cons to it. Uh, I think most of the positives is, is, is the fact that you, you, uh, you come across or it's, it's bragging rights when it, when it comes to high school specifically. We've, we've noticed that uh, when schools play one uh, each other, uh, bragging rights is always one of the, the, the top things that gets discussed. And then uh, from a district side, we then have where the, the zones nominate their players and then they play within the district. And then from there, the national trials where we want um, everybody of... South Africa to actually or different schools that that has come through the ranks of pro league, school league, and dis, district trials to to uh, participate in the pool for change national trials. How we've broken up the the beginner, intermediate, and advanced player. Uh, I've kind of made a couple of points in terms of 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 what the minimum requirements are. Uh, this is not the, the full course though. Um, it also doesn't come with all the pictures that the pack brings. But what I can say is that uh, in the beginning, it, it focuses a lot on attitude, your availability, <clears throat> the confidence and, and discipline factor as well. And we know that some of the kids generally comes through overconfident and, and when they start going through the program and understanding the disciplines they are, uh, that the kids uh, start, or, or they, they actually start having a different attitude. Um, a, nice, a nice thing that, that, we've, that we've noticed is when playing pool, if you don't give the necessary respect to playing a shot on the table, um, whether it is a easy or a more complex shot, um, if you don't give it the same respect, you can potentially miss a ball and, and lose the game. And um, we've seen many frustrations with, with the kids doing that. And, uh, and, and, you know, going through the coaching program, they, they also understand uh, what it actually is about. And um, the more advanced kids, we, we, we focus more on on the on the more complex things, working out the tactics, um, handling pressure. So it's easy to play a game of pool when it's just you and another an opponent. An opponent. Uh, I think it becomes more tough with the the bigger the crowd that surrounds the table watching your game. 
and uh, that brings a lot of pressure as well as stress. And um, what we then do is for the advanced players, we we, we kind of focus on the mental uh, game plan when it comes to to, to playing competitions. Um, so these are these are just a list of of uh, of our our methods that we use uh, for coaching. Then the implementation strategy that we had for 2019 uh, into 2020, unfortunately, uh, with with COVID and and and, and lockdown, uh, everything kind of came to halt. Uh, however, we 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 do see that there are some schools that are starting to open up a bit, and um, the this also brings a bit of of relief as well. Uh, fortunately, playing pool is not a contact sport uh, and it can be facilitated in a way that uh, the kids are safe. Um, so we phased in, especially in the Western Cape, uh, we started focusing on covering the district where uh, the phase one was at least get certain pool tables in certain schools so that the district can actually, some of the schools can move into a certain area or a school and play there. Uh, our second phase was to to cover the zones, and I, I know that from a zonal side we've we've successfully implemented phase two already. Phase three is where each school actually has a pool table, um, and and that would that would be where we would need to be in order to facilitate a a aggressive uh, coaching and um, league structure. So that's 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 kind of uh, the the short of of what pool for change is about, um, and I'm not sure if, if there's any questions, Sean. So Julian, there's a couple of questions that have come through. Um, can you explain that? Because uh, it's actually quite a, quite a key um, um, thing that you brought up earlier on. When you said, um, explain uh, what to learn instead of how to learn. Um, oh. Can you explain that for us again, please? Okay. Um, I'll just stop sharing quickly. There you go. Uh, so when, when we say, um, where the schools actually say, you know, they, they teach you what to learn. When, when you go to class, um, if you're going to history, they're going to teach you the, con the content of history. They're going to show you this is what you need to know from history. Um, you, don't get, you don't get subjects where it's a, the subject's name is concentration or it's confidence or it's focus. So we know that through, through sport, um, it actually it hones in on the the method of concentrating when doing something. It's it's taking a task and and putting your full attention to it, um, and and that is that is what we say is how you learn something. It's it's actually putting the attention to to a specific task, um, and you don't necessarily find that within the schools. I do know that certain teachers have their own methodologies of, of teaching and, and that is probably some of it, but I, I, I'm sure that that is not a, a consistent thing with, within um, the education side as how we, the difference is that when it comes to a sport, um, in, in any sport, you, you, you actually have to show someone how to do something and, and that's where we came with it. Cool, thank you. And then, um now, Khalik has got a, um, a specific project that he's going to be doing over the next um, three months, pretty much traveling around the country and, to, and speaking at certain events and stuff. Can you yeah. explain to us what, what the objective is and what, what will he be doing? And um, if you know where he's going to be going. Okay, so, so, so Khalik is, is going on a... We're gonna, we call it a roadshow. It's uh, actually taking the concept and presenting it to the schools where we show the, the kids the, 
the successes that we had within the Western Cape, um, the tournaments that was hosted, uh, the possibilities that, that comes with um, actually taking a program and kind of running with it within the school, um, the amount of interest that actually comes from the school or, or the learners and themselves in wanting to play something. It's not something where you know that uh, I have to do a 10K run um, and I'm not someone that, that is uh, built in, in a structure to, to do a 10K. Um, it's something where it's for anybody. Uh, you have, we have six year olds in primary school that is, that is, that is playing this game and uh, they have the ability to show 10 year olds what they are capable of without a, a disadvantage. Okay, and what, what province is it going to go to? Because I think he starts off in KZN next week or something like that, doesn't he? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so it's, it's, it's KZN. So he's going around uh, the coast first, um, PE, KZN, and then I think he's lost with the uh, Gauteng region being the biggest as well. Okay, and what are his, his main objectives again for, for it? Um, because you, you guys have got certain um, goals that you've set for the next year. Now, I know they've been pushed out because of, of the coronavirus, but you've yeah. got certain uh, uh, growth goals that you want for the next um, couple of years. What, what, are, what are your objectives and goals? So, so, the, so, the, so the goal is to, to become the national body um, within the school, uh, kind of fulfilling what Pool South Africa is doing within the Pool Fraternity and Federation. Um, we would be doing the same thing for, for schools as well as becoming an entity um, and the face for that. Uh, and that means that we would then have to roll out and have uh, a certain amount of schools within every um, region uh, being, I think it's a minimum of of five, so you need to have um, at least five schools within five regions in order to become a a, a national body. Okay, cool. Um, and how how what, what is your infrastructure at the moment around the country? At the moment, we are dominantly in the Western Cape. Uh, we have started pushing out a bit um, to the north. I know that there is there was talks with with uh, with the eastern province as well um, and I think that is one of the, the places that that we would then first target um, because of travel distance uh, and then Durban as well so the idea is to to have our, our first tournament probably now going to be next year we, we would invite at least two schools two to five schools from each from each province, sorry, and um, and then host a national tournament here uh, in order to go and be a representative for South Africa. And uh, to to start off, um, you guys have actually targeted um, certain schools initially in the Western Cape, and are you trying to bring it out to any school? So not not just one specific schools uh, school is is targeted outside, but who did you target initially, and what was your thinking behind it? So the, the initial target was, was the area that, that uh, Khalik was as, as staying in, uh, which is in the Cape Flats. Uh, knowing what talent was there uh, because of being active within the pool fraternity and federation, um, the idea was to, to go to the schools where um, there was an existing crowd base that had played pool before to then start promoting it and then through that promotion then kind of spread out uh, to other schools. So what we looked at was we looked at the, the disadvantaged schools first um, and because of the facilities. So we, we looked where there is an environment where we could facilitate something. Uh, we then also looked at the, the safety of, of, of the school as well and the area because uh, we, we, we wouldn't want um, kids after hours or after school hours having to walk home uh, because of the area that they stay in uh, to be at risk. So we, 
we kind of took into consideration uh, the area. We, we looked at mostly the disadvantaged schools first. And then um, what, what happened was other schools that already had a pool table in um, decided to also jump on board. And, and, and one of the reasons for that was uh, they, they, it was an easier um, plug in because they already sat with the infrastructure. Okay. Um, and then for anybody who wants to get this into their schools, um, how do they contact you and how do you recommend them getting, getting involved with, um, with, with you guys? Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Facebook page uh, that Pool for Change has. Uh, it's, it's, it's facilitated and, 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 and run by one of the EXCO members of Pool for Change. Um, if they do want anything, they can actually just drop them an inbox in, on Facebook and uh, with their contact details. And uh, one of the, the EXCO members would definitely uh, kind of come out and... and, and and have an initial meeting uh, to get the understanding of what it is that they want to achieve and um, also just do an explanation in terms of how we do things and then uh, what that strategy is as well. And your, your involvement, because you're one of the founding members, but um, there are a lot of kids that come from your kind of, uh, like your kind of background and you're quite inspirational to, to quite a few of the kids that are around there. So what is, how do you get involved from a Western Cape perspective? Uh, so um, I am, I'm a, I'm a product of, of, uh, of the sport. Um, I'm one of those kids that, that had or was lucky enough to stay off the, off the streets in the Cape Flats. Um, fortunately didn't try doing drugs or found myself in gangsterism and um, managed to, to work my way into a position where uh, I kind of own a pool all at the moment and it then facilitated my belief in wanting to give it out to the community as well. So we, we uh, because, of, because of me being saved through it, I would say, um, I thought it was also a good thing to pay it forward as well. Uh, and that's only not, not only for myself, but also for, for Khalik and, and the team. A lot of them um, comes out of the environment where they are, are placed in, an, in an, an area that is of high violence and uh, chose not to do that. Um, and kind of put their time and effort in something that uh, is worth something, would mean something to them. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That's actually very interesting. So if anybody wants to, to um, have this come to their schools, their areas, they can contact um, us or, or uh, Pulse for Change. Um, and there, there is quite a, a, a nice background to it. There is quite a, quite a nice um, social aspect to it. It's, it can be used very much within your school structures, your current school structures. So it doesn't even have to be, um, you know, you're not planning on taking over other sports. It's complementary to other sports and complementary to the education system. So thank you so much, Jay.